Uncle Doug. Mm-hmm. The brain <laughs> must be kept wet. <laughs> from from hard experience, yeah. I know which that is, to be true. Which is why we all record from our hot tubs. That's right. The brain must right. be kept. Then it doesn't matter what the fluid is. No, no, no. Yeah, you just don't want it to dry out because then it cracks. And that's yeah. kind of all I got. Yeah. yeah. I use a lot of uh, chapstick on mine. I use a lot of <laughs> I use a lot of brain and nerve tonic. <laughs> so, Uncle Dan, <laughs> <laughs> with that brilliant intro, yeah, I was, I, I was okay. really on the spot there. Sorry, yeah. I am going. I, I am going to launch in and let you guys know that I am a prophet. Mm. Mm. Now, you skeptics probably won't believe me, but God has spoken to me and told me the future. I know what will happen in both the short term and the long term, and both of you should be very ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, you don't even need to be a prophet to say that. We've talked about it on the air. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, so anyway, your avuncular misdeeds notwithstanding, anyone who wants to join my new 100% absolutely unequivocally true religion can start by sending me money. <laughs> yeah. uh, once I determine that you've sent me enough, I'll ask God to give me instructions on what to do from there. Those instructions may or may not be about sending more money. Uh, we can't know until we get there, so pony but up. Probably. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> uh, there are lots of reasons why someone might want to become a religious leader, uh, a mystic or a prophet. My personal guess, because I'm charitable like Jesus, is that most start out as you know, relatively decent people who deep down just want to feel important and powerful and maybe make a little bit of money along the way. There are sincere ones who honestly, who are honestly trying to help others, and there are cynics who are more interested in serving themselves. Mm. You can decide for yourself how many people belong in each category, but it is my entirely unsubstantiated guess that the groups I just described make up the vast majority of people standing in front of a pulpit, pulpit every Sunday. Or, a or pulpit. Saturday or Friday, whatever. But... There are some people who arrive at religious leadership and or mysticism and or whatever with a different story. Uh, these people are these are people who can honestly tell you that they have experienced something far outside of normal human experience. Mm. They come to their prophetship or prophetdom, propheticism. Pro anyway, pro pro propheticalism. I think yes, that's indeed. It. That's the uh, Latin, anyway. Right. Uh, they come to it through powerful encounters with the divine. Now, for the purposes of this segment, I'm going to talk about... I'm not going to talk about charlatans who claim to have had mystical experiences that led them into a priestly calling. Mm. We should talk uh, about that on the show one time, though. Someday we'll get Let's to it. Let's put a pin in that. That's okay. a good idea. Yeah, it's not a bad. It's not a bad idea for a segment. We should have. We should have thought of that before. Yeah. Or a whole podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> uh, yeah, no, we're not talking about those guys who, you know, who claim to have had mystical experiences that led them to a priestly calling, but are just using a bullshit story to fleece innocent dupes. They obviously exist. Uh, and are likely fairly ubiquitous, though it's impossible to know how common they actually are. Today, I want to talk about people who have had genuine, seemingly supernatural experiences that led them to where they were. Mm. The problem with this topic is that there are way too many variables to know what has actually happened to another person and what hasn't. Right. First of all, many of the people that we're going to talk to speculate about are dead. Mm. Can't run no tests on dead folks. So uh, everything that we talk well, about I, here. I be beg to differ. You can run all kinds of tests on dead folks. Because they, <laughs> well, they don't know. Not if, not, if they don't, not if their bodies don't even exist anymore. Oh, okay. Fair uh, enough. So everything that we talk about here, uh, while well, based on science, will be guesswork when it's applied to most actual people. Mm. Uh, with that said, there are some very real kinds of experiences that human have, humans have all the time that could lead them to believe for certain that there is a spiritual, mystical, or supernatural realm, and they have experienced it. Mm. I'll start with a story about a friend of mine. Uh, she is an artist and a professor, and I've known her on and off since we were about junior high aged. Uh, about a decade ago, she and I were chatting, and she confided in me 
that she had visions of angels. Hmm. Now, she didn't know what to make of them, but they happened. I asked a few questions, but it was clear she was a little bit uncomfortable with the conversation. So we didn't get too far. What we did get to uh, were two points that I thought were fascinating. One, she was not willing to dismiss the phenomenon as mere hallucinations. And two, she knew that the experiences were caused by or at least spurred on by her temporal lobe epilepsy. Hmm. Oh, she was a, she was aware of her condi- of that condition. She was. Yeah. <clears throat> and woof, she is not alone. People all over this great flat earth of ours uh, report similar events when they have seizures in the temporal lobes of their brain. Hmm. And to be honest, it sometimes sounds pretty amazing. Uh, the simplified version of how this works is this. When someone has a seizure, it's kind of like there's a little lightning storm in their brain. Uh, It can be localized to one part of the brain or zap all through the whole thing. Our brains are like extremely elaborate electronic circuit boards, and they operate by shooting electronic signals through specific pathways. If you want to raise your coffee cup to your lips, your brain sends signals to your hand, arm, shoulder, eyes, mouth, etc. At the same time, it's processing a shit ton of incoming signals about how heavy the cup is, temperature of the liquid, smells, etc. It's an insanely complex dance, and it is beautiful. Yeah. During a seizure, however, a whole bunch of the neurons that are normally incredibly precise just start firing like crazy. This can cause the intense muscle spasms that most of us associate with epilepsy. PSA, don't ever put something in someone's mouth when they're having a seizure. They hate that. Um, Especially not your fingers, you could be in real trouble. <clears throat> well, just don't put anything in their mouths. Yeah. You wouldn't want strangers putting things in your mouth, so don't put anything in there. <laughs> okay. Uh, Speak for well, yourself. Well, no, people, <laughs> for a long time, people <laughs> thought that that's what you're supposed to no, do. No, I know. Is, yeah. Is like, you know, get a, get a belt in there, get a piece of, you know, whatever. No, don't we have a relative that. with a seizure disorder. We're, a, we're, all, we're all down with the epilepsy thing. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. Um, but I will say this, the full tonic clonic what used to be called grand mal seizure is actually less common uh, as a kind of seizure. There, uh, there are lots of ways that seizures can play out. One of those ways is that people like my friend experience mild hallucinations or sometimes not mild hallucinations. Hmm. But along with those hallucinations can come some deeply spiritual feelings. People report feeling like deep universal truths are revealed to them during these episodes. One woman I read about talked about understanding the interconnectivity of the universe. One guy said it felt like someone was feeding beliefs into his brain through a wire. Mm. Many report feelings of joy or well-being, even if the immediate experience was scary at the time. Hmm. Some talk about hearing voices. Some have even felt that they encountered God. Now, we don't know much about why this happens. We do know that the temporal lobe is associated with religiousness in some way. Um, uh, Accomplished neuroscientist V.S. Ramachandran uh, did a fascinating experiment where he tested people's galvanic response, that's uh, skin electricity, to various images. He found that when testing people's response to images of normal objects like a pen or a comb, that they unsurprisingly didn't have much of a galvanic spike. Mm -hmm. Then when they saw violent or horrific images, you know, big response for people with temporal lobe epilepsy, there were two unique findings. The first was that their response to sexual imagery was very low. Don't know why, but uh, when showed images of a cross or a star of David, or even just the word God or Jesus, the shit went through the roof. Hmm. Somehow, when you hyper-excite that that temporal lobe, one possible response is religion. Hmm. Now, if you were raised with no religious beliefs, and this happens to you, you're likely to just have what could be termed a a spiritual experience with no particular dogmatic associations. If, however, you're already steeped in a religious framework, well, it's about to get very real for you. This is known as hyper-religiosity in clinical circles and is associated with a condition called Geschwind syndrome. Hmm. 
they are cause the there are causes of hyper religiosity that aren't to do with epilepsy too, uh, but se seizures seem to be a major portion of the cases. Hmm. And here's what's so vexing about it: even when these people know that they have this condition that is associated with this symptom. The feelings and experiences that they're left with are so powerful and so real for them that they frequently conclude that they actually had a brush with the supernatural and the seizure was just the conduit for it. Hmm. Um, there are extreme cases of this. One case involved a 40-year-old man, uh, for instance, who was admitted to the hospital. He had gone off his seizure medications and was absolutely convinced that all the doctors and nurses were trying to prevent him from ha attaining salvation. He was a Muslim and kept saying things like, God is with me and I do not need doctors or medications. The same, so the things he experienced through his seizures were more real to him than the trained professionals around him. Wow. Now, imagine if he had experienced those same symptoms 50 years earlier. When right. he might have been thrown into an insane asylum. Right. Or 590 years earlier. Right. Or, or 1,440 years earlier. Or 2,000 or 2,400 years earlier. Why those specific amounts of years? You ask, uncles. Well, <laughs> you sillies. That's because when that's when a few famous people throughout history uh, who very likely might have suffered from the same condition lived. Now, 590 years ago, a young peasant girl in France was helping Charles VII become king after visits from the Archangel Michael, St. Margaret, and St. Catherine of Alexandria. The voices that Joan of Arc heard and the events that she described surrounding those visits were consistent with tempor temporal lobe epilepsy. Hmm. As were the visitations 1440-ish years ago of Archangel Gabriel to a 40-year-old guy in a cave outside the city of Mecca. Mm -hmm. a, study, a study of descriptions of Muhammad from the Hadith uh, have led scholars to, and scientists to say that he likely had the same types of seizures. Hmm. Uh, seizures are certainly possible in the case of a certain moment for St. Paul as he minded his own business while traveling, down, uh, traveling on a business trip to Damascus. Uh, and you'll remember... A couple, of, a couple of weeks ago when I talked about demons, well, we get that word from the Latin word daemon, which comes from the Greek word daimon, which means roughly deity. Well, one ancient Greek was apparently <clears throat> visited by a daimonian, which translates to a divine something. Uh, this was a voice that would warn him about mistakes he was making. Socrates didn't believe in the gods of his time but was, and was forced to drink poison because of the spiritual entity that he did believe in, which was probably just an audio hallucination caused by his brain going zappy every now and then. Mm -hmm. So, while there are plenty of lying assholes out there looking to fleece a bunch of sheep, mm. let's take a moment to spare a thought for those who are genuinely convinced that, they have, that they're having a divine encounter. You know, because yeah. their brains go on the fritz. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a that's it's a it's a great point that there are people who truly believe they have had these um, divine visitations and visions and and heard voices and you know, like Joan of Arc would probably go ahead and get set on fire, not denying them, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we it's so easy for for we uh, snooty atheists to dismiss the religious uh, experiences of others, not knowing that, you know, whether or not they actually, they may have had some very profound experience that isn't what they thought it was, but, uh, but is nevertheless still uh, vitally important to them. Yeah, for sure. No, that's, that's really fascinating. And, you know, we've, we've talked plenty about what we would consider. I mean, we would consider all of them to be false prophets technically, correct? But uh, but people that are just total shysters, we've talked about yeah. plenty of times on the show, but it's really an interesting phenomenon that that there are those people who are like, no, this actually fucking happened. I saw this and including your friend who knew why she was seeing the things she was seeing. Yep. But still found them kind of profound experiences. Right. 
Yeah, and and I can understand why when someone experiences something that feels deeply profound, that feels like they've gotten some sort of access to knowledge or information that they never had before, their brain has made connections that, you know, that are well beyond anything that they had ever that they had ever thought before. I can understand saying and plus literally visually seeing beings external from yourself yeah. with your own eyes or hearing them with your own ears i can understand thinking maybe something maybe this is more than just me maybe this is bigger than just me maybe mm -hmm. something real is happening i don't know if we've talked about this on the show before but i am a i've talked about being a migraine sufferer mm. and um they've kind of come and gone through the course of my life but there is with the latest batch, there is a very occasional thing that happens. I think it's happened two or three times <clears throat> where after it's passed, there is a an absolutely real set of experiences in my head, a set of memories that I just I'm like, oh, this is I don't remember. Remember, I don't remember these things happening. And when huh. I think about them for a while, I'm like, well, that never. So, for instance, I, I literally had a memory as like it really happened, like we're talking right now, that Barack Obama called me and said, hey, do you want to go to the Kings game with me? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm in Toronto, but let me see if I can like figure it out. Yeah, I'd love to, dude. Let's, I haven't seen you in a long, like I've never met Barack Obama. Right. As far as I know, he does not have my telephone number. <laughs> I have no interest in seeing the LA Kings fucking hockey team, but it, I'd certainly go with him. That'd be fun. But it was as real as real could be. And it took me like 24 hours to convince myself it hadn't happened. Right. Wow. So and I'm, I'm your rational Uncle Mark. And but there it was because of a, a you know, a, a neurological condition. There was a memory that was as real as any other I've ever had in my head. Yeah. And I had to, you know, go back through my life to convince myself, no, that didn't happen. Well, you know, memory and brains are far more plastic and uh malleable than we want them than we want to admit that they are yeah uh, this and is I, a, a similar experience but very not from a um a migraine or something like that but i had a dream in my dream um a friend of mine murdered somebody mm. and reached out to me and i helped my friend dispose of the body i think we wrapped it in a carpet and i put think it we've in a admitted to enough on this show this <laughs> <week>. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a bad dream, obviously, but in the dream, I went home and went to bed, and then I woke up in real life, and it wasn't a long time, but it was a scary few minutes, considering what I had just done. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Until I, I'm like, oh my God, that didn't happen, that didn't happen. But, f but my memory of it was very vivid and very clear, um, and, and that's just a dream. I'm, I, I'm agreeing with you, Uncle Dan, that, the, that memory is such a fickle mistress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those things. It's it. Our brains are so fucked up that I'm actually I've actually become convinced that eyewitness testimony should always be taken with a deep grain of salt. It should not be like it's the slam dunk that every prosecutor wants, and mm -hmm. we as a society should be abandoning eyewitness testimony as almost worthless. That's yep. what the science around eyewitness testimony says now. Yeah. Right. Is it's it is incredibly unreliable. Like I I um uh somebody threw a rock through my neighbor's front window a few weeks ago, right? And um I had I had seen one person walking by, somebody just, anyway, and when the police came, I started describing what I felt like I had seen, and then I just started realizing I don't think I really got that good a look at him. Right. Mm. You know, I think I'm relying on what I heard other people say. And I was right. Like the person that I had in my mind's eye was not the person that when they looked at the security camera was not the person who did it. Right. And it was just, that was like minutes later, 20 minutes later. Right. So memory's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so and the human brain can manufacture amazing things and maybe, you know, I, maybe we'll have to, I'll have to do a, a segment maybe next week or, or sometime soon about other ways in which our human brains can be uh, can be convinced that they've ex that they've had a religious experience when indeed no I mean you know the person has experienced something <clears throat> profound and religious but 
it wasn't from anything but your own silly little brain. Well, yeah. we joke about that. We, we one time on the show, or it's actually several times, we've talked about what it would take to believe again. And um, I, I, one of us, it might have been me, said something to the effect of, "If I had, if I actually saw an angel descend from heaven and speak to me, the first thing I would do would be to go to the hospital." Yeah, because the most likely scenario is that my complex and very imperfect brain is playing tricks on me. Yeah, go 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 get, you know, have him look under the hood and if everything's okay then be like, "All right, now I have to reconsider this, yeah. right?" <laughs> but we talked about this when we talked about the religious experience along I can't remember what episode and and the god helmet how they were able to stimulate parts of the brain at the frontal lobe, I guess, Dan, to um have people experience deep spiritual feelings and some of them a small number even felt like they felt the presence of God in the room. Um, right. When I was reading up on that, there are there was a study of Vietnam veterans who had suffered a very particular sort of brain trauma, and for the rest of their lives, they felt like they were experiencing some sort of divine presence, etc. Right, spiritual experiences. So, and why would you want to take that away? Like, the, you know, if you have that experience, if you, you know, if 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 you had a brain trauma, and then from then on, something that felt beautiful was happening happening to you. I I think it I can see why a lot of people would be like, yeah, you're not going to convince me otherwise. I love that thing. I don't want it to go away. Yeah. But I mean the 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 son of Sam, right? That that's the counter example. He was 100% convinced that a dog told him to kill people. Didn't he didn't he recant that? I seem to I don't know. I think he said oh I made that all up, but I can't remember exactly. But exactly. I mean the point being that not all of these experiences are you know are beautiful. Some of them are scary or some of them push sure. people in bad directions. Yeah. Sure. Uh yeah. I you know if it points people to uh you know magical mystical beliefs, religious beliefs, I say that's a bad direction. I say you're getting you're getting bad info, bro. Or if I it, agree. you know, if it causes you to foment basically a French civil war and then you end up getting burned to death, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. Think Maybe it, it didn't th- serve you as well as you were hoping. Think it through a little bit. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's, uh, that is frontal lobe ep- epilepsy, I guess. No, that's temporal lobe Temporal lobe. Jeez, sorry. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not in the front. It's on the sides. So uh, keep, keep your brains in check and let's move on. Yeah, I got to go because I've got to hit the Kings game with Barack Obama. So talk to you guys later. <laughs> All right. Bye.